wealth within. They gave me that feeling of trust. What you learned in the course was just mind-blowing. Amazing. It was phenomenal. It opens your mind up and makes you realise you don't know what you don't know. I've got the tools now. 100% worth it. Definitely get educated. Hello and welcome to Wealth Within's weekly hot stock tips. I'm Philip Tortevsky, Senior Analyst at Wealth Within, and we are Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Every Tuesday night, you can see me on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube alongside two amazing professional traders, Janine Cox and Dale Gillum. And in the show, we answer important questions around the stock market, cover lots of great stocks and help you become a better trader. Today, we'll unveil what's hot and what's not for you, our viewers. But before we dive into this week's stocks, I am joined today by Dale Gillum. Good morning, Dale. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm fantastic, I think. Some real exciting stocks at the moment on our marketplace. Mm. I love this time, of well, the times like this, I suppose. Yes. It's because it's now the time to do the work to reap the rewards later on. Absolutely. And, um, to me, it's exciting times ahead. Christmas rally, all right. So let's get straight into it on your screen. Right now is the watch list of the top 200 ASX stocks. Now, I mean, quite an interesting spread we've got here. Though. I mean, it's Megaport huge. making a comeback there. James Hardy, a few double digits. Yeah. A few single digits. And what's quite interesting with the returns this week, even though we're seeing double digits, the majority of them aren't coming from the material sector. Well, no, because that, <laughs> that was the worst yeah. sector in the market last week. But, yeah. you know, it's a really, really nice spread of stocks through here. I mean, obviously, James Hardy up 16.59 and Block up 15. Well, the, you know, the old afterpay up 15.10, Megaport up over 12 and HMC Capital, but look at zero, 9.94% yeah. up. And you've got Corporate Travel and, and Flight Centre both up quite strongly. Wisetech and other IT up 6%. Look at QBE too, up 5.81. You've got to like that. It's just that, broken it out It just too. looks so nice, this stock. Uh, and there's plenty of nice looking stocks on the market. I mean, even though our market was only just in positive territory for the week and materials was down heavy, it, the broader market is bullish. Yeah, it the, really there's is. There's so many stocks to look at and buy right now, it's not funny. I reckon you must have had a hard job finding the, the hot stock or choosing which one. I really am, I mean, it's getting harder and harder because all the ones we've done over the last three, four months, I mean, they're, you know, they're all moving and it's they're like, I don't want to do it again because <laughs> I'll, I'll be almost cheating. But I mean, as you said, with the material sector, mm. it's important to keep in mind that, you know, we, we mm. off air had mm. a good look at the, the uh, broader material sector and, Whilst BHP Rio and FMG are the ones that impact that sector the most in terms of movement, you've got the rest that are showing real promising signs mm. moving through. So keep a closer look on that sector because you might find there is more opportunity than what the um, you know overlying sector is showing. But anyway, what's hot in the market this week? Well, on your screen right now is my hot stock tip for the week, which is Stockland Group stock ticker code. SGP, so on your screen right now is the charts. Now, again, a REIT coming through, obviously, wow. Dale. Love it. And it is giving us a little bit of that breakout type movement. I mean, if I just bring up the monthly chart here for you, um, what is real interesting with this one, it has been, you know, stuck sideways. Let's be um, real with this between 485 and $3.40 for a very long time. You know, we have seen a little bit of movement onto the upside and downside of that, but what I find Quite interesting is that this recent breakthrough, and if you hover your eye at that particular four dollar eighty level, you can see each time it popped its head through from two thousand and sixteen onwards, it really you know saw sellers come in quite strongly and send the market lower, saying, "Hey, we're not we're not accepting prices above this level." The most um, you know damning effect of or, or example of that was back during two thousand and twenty, the COVID, which saw a tickle above here and then break on down. But what's different this time, um, for now anyway, is the fact that we've come through with really strong buying. And if you look at the, the nature of this particular uh, bar through November, we've had sellers have the opportunity to say, hey, we're not accepting high prices, but it's really a bullish market right now. I mean, it's closing above the open. All the selling through here has been picked up by buyers. So what I'm saying is if we can get a break above that uh, dashed black line through there, I think we're in a prime example here where the market could break out into trend. You can see it really showing signs of that through this period here, through the higher highs, higher lows. It's not erratic, ugly type price action. It is look like, looking like a trending market. And so there's gonna be opportunity above $5.50 if we can get through there uh, in the short to medium term, definitely. And potentially, you know, if we're breaking out into that longer term uh, uptrend, if interest rates are likely to drop, that's gonna bode well for the materials, uh, for the real estate sector, sorry. And, um, <laughs> we'll get it. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look too euphoric at the moment. It, it could spell some opportunity. No, I like it. This is a perfect example why you don't use 
support or resistance to buy or sell, which is a, it's a common sin that I see so many traders do. Yeah, is they use support and resistance to to buy a stock. You know, if, mm. it's, if it breaks through resistance, they start buying it. And and if we go back to the chart, we can have a really good look at this um, on the chart. You can see resistance all the way through here. And what's actually happening? A lot of people don't understand this. Is there's there are there are sellers sitting above here, or the big institutions are sitting here going, okay, when it breaks through. We know a lot of people buy because mm -hmm. there's orders um, that traders put in there to when it breaks through resistance that they buy. Yes. And the big end of town know that. And so they let them buy or they, they might push it through a little bit, push the price through to, to get them to buy. And when the volume comes in, then the big instos start selling. Well, it creates uh, the liquidity it, for it them. It creates the liquidity, which is why it's different nowadays. So there's multiple times there where it's pushed through only to go back the other way, which is why we don't teach – Support, we, we, we teach support and resistance, but yeah. in context to what everything else is happening um, on the market and obviously on the stock that you're actually looking at, but mm. they're not buy and sell rules. They're only part of, a, of your analysis. And that's why this, this area is so different than all of this yeah. is because you see it's a big, strong break, but it can, it's holding above it. That retest is really, really critical because when it did that on here, you knew, and even though the next two bars did exactly, you know, moved up because this one, Moved up, but it only closed just above resistance, yeah, no and then above. it did exactly and reversed again. So you could have picked that pretty easily mm -hmm. not to get into that. But as I said, I don't know how many times I've been to seminars with traders or you know um, exposed in presenting, and traders are talking to me about support and resistance like it's the be all and end all. And to me, it's like one of the least things I look at. Actually, mm. from a buying and selling point of view, it's, it's from analysis point of view, it's different. Yeah. But buying and selling, it's the least thing I look at. Yeah. You know, but I love this as a hot stock for this week. All right, fantastic. Well, that is it for my hot stock tip. Now, we're moving on to a stock that should make you proceed with caution. Coles Group stock ticker code COL on your screen is the monthly chart on the left and the weekly on the right now. Again, Coles, quite an interesting story. I yeah. mean, you know, it's really come through with, you know, it gets hammered in the in the media oftentimes. This one in Woolworths about you know price gouging and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty normal, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm starting to think you know if you're not accepting the fact that that's what's going on, then. Um, but anyway, in terms of uh, it, it recorded some good numbers in terms of um, earnings um, recently. But what why it is a caution to me is this overriding nine dollar twenty level. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> since August two thousand and twenty, this level has been so strong in holding. Uh, further upside for for Coles. Now, what's quite interesting, if we zoom out, this whole move through here could just be one massive accumulation. And I really like the fact, the way it's come out, obviously it had this huge dip in August 2023 and found support, not surprisingly, at a level that it's been finding support at since 2020. We break back up. We have a nice little test through here. We've got a momentum line tracking the stock fantastically, which we've tested recently. And although we've hit resistance through here, the pullback is you know less than half of this run up that we've seen since May 2024. So to me, from a technical perspective, I do believe that we are going to get another leg up if we can hold, especially like the way it's looking during November now, and break on with some green bars. We're going to get a retest of this 1920 level. The real question is whether this time it's going to be the one that breaks through. And so whilst there might be a short to medium term opportunity in this one, it, in terms of a long-term play, I really do need to see it break through that 1920 with vigor uh, and conviction, and possibly the safest trade if you're looking for a long-term, um, from a long-term perspective, is to see how price reacts on the flip side once it gets through 1920. Because right now, it's you know it's only short term for me. Well, there's not enough profit there. That's right. There's really not. I mean, I won't even touch this unless it's or oh, any stock unless there's minimum 10% upside potential. Like yeah. This. Because obviously, once you get into it, slippage getting in, getting out, if you have to get out, you still want to be you know, at least a couple of percent up Absolutely, for, yeah. your, for your time and effort. But 7.9% to this, obviously, resistance line, there's nowhere near enough. So why would – and people say to me, oh, well, if I, if it goes through 1920 and keeps going, well, I could have got another 8%. And they go, well, but you if, could lose 15% if mm -hmm. you get into it now and it just – goes up here and then flips away and then starts to fall back back down to this line again. So to me, I, I think you're right. Once it gets through this properly, not just break through it like it's done here and, and through here mm. and fallen away again. Once it, like the last stock that we had, once it breaks properly through that, holds above it, then this, the sky's the limit on this stock. Oh, yeah. And I mean, just think back 2020 mm. to 2024, the All Lords, mm. you look at Commonwealth, mm. you look at the major stocks on our market, 
it was range bound, you know, really it compressing, was. accumulating. Yeah. And what we've seen come out of 2024 is trend. And to people like you and I, I mean, that is not surprising because that's what stocks do. Yeah. Once they, you know, have these periods, the next thing is either it's only going to break up or it's going to break down. And so right now, this could be in one of those periods where, hey, once it gets back into trend, you're going to see a beautiful um, bullish market in the long term to be able to get fantastic opportunity. But as we said, not right now. But anyway, moving on. Lastly, what's not hot in the stock market this week? Well, Endeavor Group stock ticker code EDV. So let's get into the charts. Right now on the screen is the monthly wow. and weekly. Now, this particular stock to me had some interesting promise in the fact that when it hit these all-time lows, tested the all-time low and started giving this kind of formation, it you know could have presented one of two opportunities. And you know we often say, um, as I just mentioned uh, a second ago, that hey, this could spell that someone a big accumulation is coming through, or it could mean that the stock is just taking a huge pause before it breaks out. It's the breakout which is what determines where the trend is likely to go next, and it's a very clear indication of where it wants to go next. But all the all these stocks that we've mentioned today, mm. it's all about what's a safe place to enter. Oh yeah, and that's not about the price of the stock. Absolutely, and this is where that I find the difference between educated traders and retail or can I say, I won't say re of retail traders, but mm. I mean the ones that aren't educated. Because yeah. the ones that aren't educated are more focused on the price. Mm. Whereas the educated traders are more focused on the entry and the exit, mm -hmm. regardless of what the price is. It's do I get a good entry and do I get a good entry or how do I get a good entry and exit yep. on the stock and, how, and what's the best position sizing and how do I manage it? as I'm going through. Whereas I see a lot of traders, they're trying to pick the cheapest price to get mm. in and the most price to get, the highest price to get out. Like, oh, is it gonna get to this price? And if it gets there, I'm gonna get out of it. Mm. And if you're focusing on price, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You really should be focusing on entry and exit. But doing your analysis, and 90% of your work is all done before you've hit that buy button, at least 90% of your work, that you have to have done making sure you've got the right entry, uh, you got the right analysis, you understand how the market's going to unfold into that white space onto the right of the screen, which most people don't know how to do. They just pick the price and hope that the white space on the, on the right-hand side works out for them and they end up making money. But as I said, 90% of the work's already done before you buy, and if you do that, the buy and sell's easy. Easy, whereas this is another stock that says, well, okay, it's going down now. It's been going down for most of its time on the marketplace, you know, you can see it's all-time high right over there, which is not that long ago. Uh, and you can see there that's at $8.40. This stock is probably hitting to, heading to around $2 something. That would be my guess. Uh, good shorting stock, but I think it's probably got $2, $2.50-ish on the horizon. I mean, it's so important what you just said, because at the end of the day, when you break it down, it's all about that confirmation. Yeah. And being able to determine that confirmation through education, through rules, through, you know, getting in at the right time and getting out at the yeah. right time. Because really, I mean, as you said, at the end of the day, that is the only thing that matters when you're trading, uh, you know, stocks or market. It's how much, what is my risk reward before I get in? Yep. And is it worth my time getting into this trade? And knowing that white space that, hey, based on probability, statistics, reading price, I know that it's going to get to X, Y, Z level, which is why you often uh, mm. see when we do these reports, we often say, hey, if this stock gets above here yeah. and, you know, we're, we're reading the white space before it's happening because we know what price should be doing. We're not, you know, reacting to price mm. saying, hey, I think it's cheap, as you said, because stocks can remain cheap a lot longer than you can remain solvent. Yeah, so. and this is where a lot of a lot of I'll, I'll use the word ignorant, but I'm not meaning it in terms of being a derogatory rude, yeah. terms. I'm just trying to be rude to people. It's about you don't know what you don't know. Mm. That's really what I mean by ignorant. And a lot of people don't understand their ignorance and how much it's actually costing them, not only in just losing trades, but also time. Yeah. They're losing time because they're in trades that they shouldn't be in that aren't really profitable. But they're also losing out on profits because they're exiting way too early and missing out on safe, safe profits mm. because they're not getting their entry and exit. They're not trading on confirmation. They're not using all the analysis and doing that 90% of their work before they get into the trade, which means they're using more emotions in their buyers and sells. They're unsure of what's happening and you know when the stock falls away. And the prime example for you, if you're watching, anybody watching this, if you're worried about a stock that starts falling away on you, then you're the candidate for that. Because mm. if you should be, I never worry about a stock going down because I already know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. You know, it's like you're in the car, you know, if you get a red light, you stop. If it's a green light, you go. You know, if somebody comes from the side, you know what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with the stock market. Learn what you've got to do. Um, and it's easy to mm. trade really, really well.
Yeah, and particularly if we just go back to uh, this stock here, Endeavor Group. Now it's not a case of looking looking and buying this dip because what you might no. off, what you might find is that hey, whilst this stock might give you some buying reaction through this um, heavy selling. You've got to be weary that, hey, it might just bounce back into this level through here, which is a very common technical move that happens with stocks before the next, next strong leg down. down. So really, you know, you do need to wait for this a significant reversal. I wouldn't trade this with your money, mate. No, well, that says something right. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this edition of Wealth Within's Weekly Hot Stock Tips. Remember to tune into the live Australian stock market show on YouTube from 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. To find us, just type Wealth Within Live in the YouTube search. And remember to have your phone ready to call in live to speak to us so we can answer your questions. The number is 03 9290 Or you can email into the show right now by sending your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now, if you want a copy of Dale's first book, you can still get it for free. You just have to pay the shipping. You can order it from our homepage, wealthwithin.com.au. And I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And as always, thank you, Dale, for your excellent comments today. Oh, look, my pleasure, mate. I mean, I really do enjoy doing these shows with you now. Well done for the stock you picked anyway, but I do look forward to chatting with everyone tomorrow night or Tuesday night on the Australian Stock Market Show live. Um, I love doing that show. Yes. My last one for the year, I'm, I'm having holidays after. You're on break. Um, but we've got a big surprise next week's show on Tuesday night. If you're, into F, into, if you're into FX, you need to be watching next Tuesday night or Tuesday night next week. Yes, very special guest. But anyway, thank you very much, Dale. And thank you all for watching for now. Goodbye, good luck and good trading.